Welcome back. In our last lesson, we talked about the place theme of geography and physical characteristics and human characteristics. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the physical characteristics of the United States. What are the physical characteristics of the United States is our essential question today. Remember, the physical characteristics of a location are the things that you find naturally in your environment like mountains, lakes, and rivers. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain some of the physical characteristics and geographic features of the United States. Our state standard will be looking at the physical characteristics of a region. Get your notebooks ready and jot down these words. Bodies of water, climate zones, landforms, vegetation, contiguous. Look for those definitions as you work through the video. A quick review, physical differences from one place to another is what physical characteristics are. Things that occur naturally, such as mountains, rivers, wildlife, and the climate. Remember in our last lesson, we looked at each of these pictures and picked out the things that occur naturally in each of these environments. Today we're going to be looking at a lot of physical maps. Remember, a physical map shows what the surface of the Earth looks like. It highlights features such as mountains and forests. We'll be looking at maps of the United States that feature the contiguous 48 states. The word contiguous means joined together inside a common boundary. So when you hear a weatherman talk about the 48 contiguous states, they're talking about the states that are connected on the mainland. Alaska and Hawaii are not part of the 48 contiguous states on a physical map. This map highlights the major bodies of water in the United States. Take a moment to locate them. Atlantic Ocean is on the east coast, Pacific Ocean on the west coast, Gulf of Mexico to the south, Great Lakes to the north, Mississippi River, Missouri River. As a geographer, you want to understand where the major waterways are where you live. It could impact your weather, flooding, whether or not you need flood insurance for your home. It affects tourism. The states along the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean draw crowds to the beaches. It affects trade. Shipments from other countries can come in through the major bodies of water. This physical map of the United States shows landforms. Use the key at the bottom of the map to understand what the colors identify. We have deserts, mountains, grasslands, woodlands, and tundra. Take a look at the East Coast. The Appalachian Mountains run right through the state of Pennsylvania. So some of you may live in a very mountainous area. Understanding the landforms of a country impact homeowners, businesses, farms. If you want to open a ski resort, you're not going to move to the Great Plains. You want to move to the area with the mountains. The last physical map we're going to look at is climate zones. Climate zones are geographic areas that have similar patterns of temperature and precipitation. Precipitation means rainfall. The climate affects what vegetation, jobs, and severe weather threats affect an area. Before you plant something, you want to know what climate zone you live in so you understand which plants, crops, trees will thrive in that area. If you compare this drought warning map to our climate zone map, you'll notice that the areas most hard, hardest hit by drought happen to be the warmest areas in the country that receive the least amount of rainfall. Why would this be important to know? If you're a farmer and relying on income from your crops, you need to know if there's a drought warning. Also to track forest fires and the dangers that come along with a drought. Let's look at our landform map again. 
Notice how the Great Plains are right in the middle of our country. Great Plains are a very flat area. If you now look at our tornado warning map, Tornado Alley happens to be right in the same area of our country. And it has to do with the flatness of the land and the air temperature. So if you live in Tornado Alley, you'd want to be prepared. Let's look at one more map and talk about being prepared again. If you look at the key to this map, it tells you what each color signifies. There's earthquakes moderate risk, earthquakes high risk, flood zones, hurricanes, and tornadoes. We've already talked about Tornado Alley. Let's look at the flood zones, this orange color here. If we compared that to our landform map, we'd see that the river, the Mississippi and Missouri River, run right through that area. That's why it's a high flood zone. So if you lived in that area, you'd want to be prepared with flood insurance, maybe sandbags, and you'd watch the weather for flood warnings. Let's do a quick check. Which is considered a landform? Desert, mountain, climate zone. If you said mountain, you'd be correct. Which map would you use to determine what vegetation to plant? Climate zones, bodies of water, landforms. It's kind of a trick question. You'd want to know all these things before you planted crops. Let's review the objectives. What are the physical characteristics of the United States? If you don't think you can describe some of the physical characteristics, you should watch this video again. In our next lesson, we're going to move on to the next theme of geography, human-environment interaction. We're going to talk about how humans depend on, modify, or adapt their environment.